Good morning, all those who love literature, who love books. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. It's been three days. Existence keeps flowing by, drifting on the death flow. It is October the 7th, 2020. It is a Wednesday morning here in West Michigan. It is 10.16 in the morning. And I was really kind of debating whether to make a video because it's, I don't know, it's not, it's not that I don't find it hard making a video, it's just that I don't think I'm that, uh, have charisma, <laughs> I don't have, my videos are not high production, they don't look like TV shows, I'm not articulate, I'm just an old guy, uh, and uh, I don't think that I'm that exciting, but I like to, I think I don't want to stop making videos. So I come here to make a fool of myself. <laughs> it's, it's part of my insecurity. I mean, uh, I've been thinking about that a lot lately since my wife is retired and she's home all the time. And I find that I am doing what I've always done in my life. I'm always judging myself by other people. And I find myself judging myself in the light of who my wife is. And it's kind of like my wife is perfect. <laughs> to me, my wife is perfect. I mean, she's... She's a... Uh, a great Christian woman. She loves people. She's happy. She she prays all the time and she reads the Bible and she's always going out in the neighborhood and talking to the neighbors and praying for our neighbors and she's always visiting her friends and she goes to church faithfully. She supports the church and missions and charities and she's always giving and giving not only to me but to our children and our grandchildren and and I look at myself and I'm just sitting here on a Wednesday morning writing in my diary reading my books and just floating on the death flow <laughs> you know I don't know if I'm really a happy person. I don't know if I, you know, I believe in prayer and, you know, I've been reading the Bible this morning. I'm, I'm in the, the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy. I'm on chapter 15 of Deuteronomy and I got out last night. This book has been on my mind. It's called God's Glory and Salvation Through Judgment of Biblical Theology by James M. Hamilton Jr. So I've been reading this book. And uh, also I got out to read on Deuteronomy. J uh, now Choose Life, Theology and Ethics in Deuteronomy by J. Gary M Miller. I read this a, a while back, parts of it, when I was reading Deuteronomy a couple of years ago, and I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it on Deuteronomy. And so, I showed you this book. I've been reading Old Testament Theology, Israel's Gospel, Volume 1 by Joel, John Gullingay. This is Volume 2. Old Testament Theology, Israel's Faith, Volume 2 by John Golengay. And this is Volume 3, Old Testament Theology, Israel's Life, Volume 3 by John Golengay. If you want to really get into the Old Testament in depth, I recommend this series. I've, I've had them for a number of years, and I really haven't gotten much into them until recently, and uh, I think they're really worth buying. I mean, they're over 
900 pages a piece, so it's over a thousand something pages of Old Testament theology, but he, if you really want to get an understanding of the Old Testament, I recommend that three volume series. Still reading Biblical Theology According to the Apostles, How the Earliest Christians Told the Story of Israel by Chris Bruno, Jared Campton, and Kevin McFadden. And I'm still reading The Story Retold. A Biblical Theological Introduction to the New Testament by J. G. K. Beale and Benjamin L. Glad. So I've been reading these this morning for devotions. Like, like my wife, I just said a minute ago, she reads her Bible in the morning, she prays, she's uh, always showing acts of mercy to people and always singing spiritual songs and you know I go around <laughs> murmuring and complaining like the Israelites wandering in the wilderness there in the Old Testament uh, supposed to be rejoicing in the Lord supposed to be praying without ceasing I'm supposed to be showing compassion to those around me reaching out evangelizing uh, going to church on Sunday, worshiping the Lord, and being involved in the Christian community. And But it's like um, my wife is, be, is going to leave uh, on the 19th of October. Our daughter is going to have a baby the end of this month, Nora Jean, and my wife's going to leave. And I'm thinking to myself, well, she said to me last night that I got a driver to the airport, which is about 25 minutes from here in Holland. And I'm already freaked out about having to drive to Grand Rapids. I haven't driven to Grand Rapids in over a year. Now I'll drive around Holland where we live. I'll drive around in my old beat up Dodge van, which is about almost 30 years old. But I don't really drive anywhere else. I don't drive at night, I won't drive in rain, I won't drive in f fog, I won't drive in snow, ice, or anything. But I'll drive around a couple of miles where we live, local thrift stores, and that's about it. My wife, now that she's retired, if we go anywhere, she does the driving. And I am still, you know, holding on tight, waiting for a car wreck. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to plow into me and end my life and usher me into eternity. I have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And, you know, I'm always staring death in the face. And, but my wife, you know, she'll, like, she's going to be flying out to Denver on the 19th of this month. And I'd be scared. I'd be so scared flying an airplane, waiting for it to crash. My wife just goes, you know, flies out to Denver. Oh, it takes three hours when she takes a nonstop flight. But I could, you know, I would just dread having to get into a plane and be way up in the sky, enclosed in some kind of airplane. I just would feel freaked. My wife, she just, you know, she just trusts the Lord and her divine providence, you know. And my wife, you know, this morning she left to go. My wife has left the day to go on a color tour with her, one of her friends, you know, drive up north and look at all the autumn colors. And she left early this morning. It was dark when she left. I could not drive <laughs> to Grand Rapids to meet up with someone to go on a color tour. I couldn't drive. It would just freak me out. So I sit here in my own little shell, my own little cell, writing on my diary. I'm on page 942 for the month of October. For the year 2020, we're coming to the end. We're on the 10th month. My wife and I, we did go, other day we went looking at, we went south to Finville Public Library, which is a little small town south of Holland. And we they have a used books room in this library. And I picked up this book. My wife has been buying a lot of used books. When we go to thrift stores, my wife's the one who's been buying the books. <laughs> I'm very selective what I buy. I just don't buy anything. 
But I found this at the Finville Public Library book room, used book room, The Final Act, The Road to Waterloo by Gregor Dallas. This is, I have, I have books on Napoleon, the no, Neopatonic, was it Neo, was it, what's that name? Napoleon, the Napoleonic Wars. But anyway, this is on Waterloo, and it was only 50 cents, and uh, so I bought it. I have books on Waterloo, books on Napoleon, and people like that. And I found this novel. Now, I was looking at the novels, and I never heard of this writer. His name is Nerdin Fer. Farrell, Farrell, he is a South African writer. This is his novel, Knots, and this was written in, this was published in 2007. He has seven novels. It says here that he's considered one of uh, uh, Nerudin Farrell's name. He is uh, considered one of uh, South Africa's most famous writers, African writers. And I read reviews of this book and it was all negative reviews. And I, you know, nobody really spoke highly of it. So at first I wasn't going to read it. But then I was curious, people in Goodreads, Amazon, just said it wasn't really worth reading. So I was really curious, you know, is this thing not worth reading? So I've been reading it, and I've read half of it, and I don't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> to me, it's like reading, like, uh, it's just a straight narrative. It has characters. It takes in Somalia during the Civil War. They're in Somalia. Uh, that's where he was born. The writer, uh, Nadine Farrell, was born in Somalia, and his novels take place usually in uh, Magdishio, Magdishio, the major city there in Somalia along the coast, uh, which has, I, I looked on YouTube last night about Magadishu, and it has 15 million people. It's, it's one of the most dangerous places in the world to go to. Uh, so anyway, the, the novel takes place in Somalia and Medishu and the main character. I won't go into the whole novel, but I'm just saying, I don't think, I don't, I don't think, I think it's worth reading. Now, I don't know about his other novel. He's written seven, seven other novels. He's 74 years old. He's taught traveled all over the world. I don't know. It reminds me of reading a novel from the 60s. Uh, it's just, and I think what, I think people might find this novel, why it got bad reviews, because people maybe are so used to reading modern, modernism and postmodern writers, and he's more of a traditional novelist writes a straight story, characters, and um, I don't know. Now, me personally, just go to your library and check it out. <laughs> don't spend, uh, you know, $26 unless you really want to support a writer. But anyway, I, I've been reading this the last couple of days, and uh, I've been kind of like just wandering around, like I said, I read, you know, I read my Bible in the mornings and been reading Old Testament theology. I'm on page oh, 490 in this. And I've been reading this this morning, God's Glory and Salvation Through Judgment of Biblical Theology by James M. Hamilton, Jr. And I, I bought this book a number of years ago and I read parts of it, but I wanted to see what he 
wrote on Deuteronomy in the Old Testament as far as God's judgments showing his displaying his divine glory so that's why I'm reading uh, chapter 2 in the Torah so that's why I'm reading this so that's what's going on like I said I'm trying to just deal with my anxieties and my dread and my fears and my sense of insecurity and feeling I'm just totally sinful and having to know that my wife is not perfect. I mean, when she prays, she always confesses her sins and asks forgiveness and she knows she's not perfect. But it's how I am. I'm always judging myself by other people. And Now, it's not that I... I don't, I mean, I accept who I am, but at times I do wish I was sometimes different, but at the same time, I am happy of who I am. Self-acceptance is really important. Now, I know that I'm forgiven of my sins. I know I'm saved by grace. I know I'm justified by faith. I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for God forgive me of my sins. I seek to love my neighbor. I seek to love my wife and my children and my grandchildren. Uh, I prepared myself to be a gospel minister and the Lord decided in his divine wisdom to set me aside. And so I just have to accept my lot in life and just pray that God would use me and make me more like Christ but living among living with my wife now 24 hours I get really I wish I wasn't so grumpy <laughs> so introverted so insecure and so anxious I wish I was just free like her to just to go out into the world and and do stuff but I find the world a wasteland I find the world a howling wasteland I don't like the world I never have since I can remember. I've always just withdrawn into my own little world. World of books. So thank the Lord for books. Thanks the Lord for good books, good literature. Thank the Bible. Thank the Lord for the Bible. Good Christian books. Thank the Lord for coffee in the morning, writing in my diary. My wife said she would not be home until late this afternoon, early evening, so I got the whole day to myself. It's kind of autumn weather. I opened up all the windows this morning in the house. And the other day I mowed the lawn in the front and the back. And So here I am. As we live in COVID-19, there's a plague. Thousands and thousands of people are dying. We have an insane person in the White House. And God's on his throne, ruling the heavens and the earth. So, with this, uh, when I finished Numbers, I was asking the Lord, you know, what, what, is the, the, what can we summarize the teaching of the book of Numbers? And he directed me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I thought I'd just read it in closing this morning. Old Testament examples, chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud. All passed to the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and noise and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And one day 23,000 fell. Let, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by, this, by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples. 
and they were written for our ammunition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except it is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee idolatry. So with that, I will close. I hope you're having a good week. Hope you're all well. Stay safe. Uh, and yeah, thank you for the comments, the new subscribers. I do pray that you uh, continue to have a good reading week. And until next time, bye.